this is Sudhay Chandra. I have done bachelor's in aeronautical engineering. Now I am going to present a topic which is finite element analysis. It is often called a finite element method. In 1941, Henry Alexander Entikoff is the inventor of this finite element method to solve the elasticity problems and the stress analysis problem which is involved in civil engineering and aerospace structures engineering. First of all, what is finite element analysis? It is a mathematical tool to solve the problems like stress analysis, heat conduction, electrical field, magnetic field, and fluid flow and aerospace components, etc. Uh, it is used to solve the problems like stress analysis, displacements under the bound, loading and boundary conditions, which is involved in uh, splitting the small elements, that is complicated structures. Uh, what are the concepts of FCA? Uh, this is the basic contrast to involved in the uh, finite element analysis. To find the area of the leaf in the finite element analysis, there are two methods. One is analytical method and another one is graphical method. In analytical method, to find the area of the leaf, that is uh, integrate over the leaf, that is area equal to integration of uh, red leaf minus integration of green that is integration of whole, whole, whole thing minus integration of this leaf that is the area of the leaf in analytical method next one is graphical method graphical method is to find the area of the leaf that is area equal to a that is square of the element a multiplication of number of elements in the structures that is two methods and to find the geometry of the components, there are two methods. One is regular geometry and another one is irregular geometry. Regular geometry is nothing but that is geometry in regular position. This is the example for regular geometry. To find the area, to find the area and length of the regular geometry, it is easy to easy to calculate. To find the stresses, strain and stiffness of the uh, this uh, this component, uh, it, it is very too so easy to to calculate the stress line and stiffness of the, this component. And next one is irregular geometry. Irregular geometry is nothing but the, that is discrete association error. That is dividing the dividing the element which is in regular manner. This is the example for irregular geometry. So we cannot find out the stress strain and uh, displacement stiffness of the this this geometry. And uh, first of all, what is stress? Stress is nothing but the load. Uh, divided by the area of this component that is load divided by a, L by A and strain is nothing but the change in length to the original length of the material and stiffness is nothing but the this rigid, rigidity of the element that is deformation of the element when the load is acted this is example for stiffness simply supported beam and the load is acted over the top of this uh, top of this beam it will elongate like this uh, this is called a uh, stiffness, stiffness of the material and uh, in the, to minimize the discretization error of the component we can minimize the error, minimize the size of the element that is splitting the element in small small size that is so that only we can discrete, uh, minimize the discretization error and next one is net, network of the spring to find the stiffness of the spring of the material first one is elasticity, elasticity, elasticity is nothing but the, when the load is applied uh, and within the elastic limit the, the load is applied the material will deform until the removal of the load that is when the load is removed it will regain to original position that is elasticity here the bar is acting like spring to find the stiffness of the material that is uh, stiffness k equal to a e by l a is nothing but the area of the material and e is any modulus any modulus is nothing but the elasticity of material which is it is when the load is acting over the material, it, it will deform in shape. That is, when the load is applied, it will elongate. That is called a any modulus, modulus of rigid, rigidity. And this is the complex, uh, complex geometry of the network of the spring. Here the springs are connected in series as well as parallel, parallel position in this block diagram. To find the stiffness of the this spring, we can use two methods. One is springs in parallel and another one is spring, springs in series first we, we have calculated the stiffness of the springs in parallel and then we calculated the stiffness of the spring in series there is two methods one is 
Spring theory parallel we calculate k equal to k1 plus k2. This is the formula to calculate the uh, stiffness of the spring in parallel. And next one is series. Series we can calculate by the 1 by k1 equal to that is 1 by k equation equal to 1 by k1 plus 1 by k2. This is the equation to, for, to find out the stiffness of the springs in series. Finally, average of the average of the spring stiffness or average stiffness can be calculated by using these formulas that is taking the average between two, these two equations. And this is the indeterminate structure that is we can we cannot find out the stiff, stiffness of the spring in this structure. This is the indeterminate structure. So to so we can split the error in small small size and then we can find out the stiffness of the material that is uh, splitting the discrete is the discrete is the structure in small small element so that only we can find out the stiffness of the material and next one is stress strain curve stress strain curve is nothing but to find the properties properties of the material this is the stress strain curve for uh, plastic material and this is shows uh, a is nothing but the proportional limit that is the uh, limit uh, that is the exact limit of the average limit of the material and the b, b is the elastic, elastic limit that is the deformation of the material that is elastic limit b is and c is the yield point yield point nothing is the before the fracture point that is before fracturing element before fracturing element that is one element it is yield point and final one is uh, d is the fracture point fracture point is nothing but the and the wall, when the wall load is applied, it will fracture. That is called the fracture point. And next one is free body diagram approach for the to calculate the stiffness matrix of the springs. And this is the free body diagram of the spring. And U and U I and U J are the displacement vector. And the F is the force of uh, force of the material. And K is the stiffness of the material. And to find us to find out the stiffness matrix of the material, that is K into D equal to F. It is K into D equal to F. K is the stiffness of the material and D is the displacement. And F is the force vector. To find out the stiffness matrix K equal to force divided by displacement vector. Uh, this is the diagram to calculate the uh, stiffness matrix matrix of the material. And next one is pro properties of the stiffness matrix. Pro to find out the properties of the stiffness matrix, we can use Gauss elimination theorem. First one is square. Square is uh, first one is square when the matrix is should be in the form of three by three matrix or two by three two two by two matrix. That is it is called square of the matrix. Suppose. Uh, we can take a 3 by 3 matrix that is 2, 2, 2, minus 2, minus 2. This is the 3 by 3 matrix. Uh, this is the example for square of the stiffness matrix. And next one is symmetrical. So symmetry means that is the except for this diagonal. The value of the uh, lower diagonal and uh, lower, uh, lower matrix and upper matrix are equal. That is called symmetrical. And next one is positive diagonal. That is diagonal value should be in positive. That is uh, diagonal of the matrix should be in positive value. And next one is determinant of positive. In this lower matrix we can take modulus. So it will come automatically it will come. We can take square, so it will come automatically 4. That is always in positive value. The determinant should be always in positive value. This is the properties of the stiffness matrix. And next one is there are two types of analysis in finite element method. One is linear analysis and another one is non-linear analysis. In linear analysis, we can analyze the materials like composite materials and rubber material, concrete materials. These are the things we have, we have to analyze in non-linear process. And next one is linear process. In linear process, we can analyze the steel, metal, carbon, and fiber. These are the materials we can analyze in linear linear process. And next one is workflow diagram for finite element analysis.
In finite element analysis, there are two process, three process involved in finite element analysis. One is preprocessor, and another one is solver. Next one is post processor. Here, yeah, this is the workflow diagram for finite element analysis. First one is geometry preparation, that is 2D or 3D model, which is uh, imported from a CAD model, which is which has to be designed in CAD software. It has to be imported into finite element method, that is 2D, which, that is 2D or 3D, 3D model. After the importing of the model, we can clean up the geometry. That is, if there is any defect in the if there is any defect in the geometry. Uh, any defect in the shape of the material, so that only we clean up the clean up the component using using the geometry preparation. And next one is meshing. Meshing is nothing but splitting the element in small 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 size. That is discretization. After the after the meshing, we give the connectivity using the nodes uh, between the between the meshing small small elements. Give the connectivity. Between these elements, after that uh, we, we are going to calculate the quality check, quality of the component. And next one is material uh, material. After that we find out the material properties of the component, uh, whether the that is uh, stress analysis and uh, how much of load it stand and uh, thermal conductivity and uh, heat conduction. These are all the things to find out the. Material properties in finite element analysis, and next one is uh, assume the thickness. Uh, that is, uh, give the thickness of the component. Uh, that is, assume the thickness. That is, whether it is one D component or two D component or three D component. And next one is uh, give the loading and boundary conditions of the elements. Uh, that is, first one. Uh, first of all, you assign the property, and next one is giving the constant. Constant constant is nothing but the fixing the element in particular manner. And next one is giving the loads, and then use the solvers to uh, to get the values uh, values of the materials and the quality everything and all. And final one is post processor. Uh, post processor is this nothing but the manufacturing process. Here the solvers are used to analyze the process that is used in LS Dyna or uh, radius axis or something are used to uh, used to analyze the analyze the components which is solvers. And next one is what are the CAE tools in finite element analysis? First one is hypermesh. Hypermesh is nothing but the pre-processing tool to find the uh, structure and methods of the finite element analysis. Next one is Nasprom, Proton. That is both. Uh, this is our pre-processor and post-processor. And next one is Radius. This is a solver and uh, Abacus is also solver. Half system. These are all the solvers to find out the loads, loads, what are the loads and the material properties of the finite element material. And then next one is working procedure for uh, Proton. It's a pre-processor tool. First one is geometry. In geometry, you can use clean up the geometry. And next one is meshing. In meshing, whether it is 1D component or 2D component or 3D component, we can give the we can split the element in small small size. That is called meshing. After the, after finishing the meshing, we give we give the loads and find out the material properties. After that, uh, concern, we give the concern that is that is fixed in a particular manner. After uh, after giving the concern, we go to analysis. Analysis analysis using the solver solver software to analyze the material properties and the uh, uh, and the so what are the loads acting on the material. These are things to solve uh, to solve the things in the analysis process. Next one is find out the result. Finally, we will get the result using post-processor software. And next one is working procedure in Proton. First one is import the import the file, which is import import the file from 1D or 2D or 3D component, which is import from the CAD, CAD model. And next one is element. element. That is creating, creating the element and cleaning the geometry. And giving the mesh that is uh, splitting the element in small small component, and final finally giving the constraints, giving the constraints that is giving the dimension in a particular manner. After all, it's degree of degree of freedom. Degree of freedom is nothing but the its ability to move the move the material in all the direction. Finally, give the load, 
And next one is assume the material properties. Uh, that is isotropic Young modulus Poisson ratio. These are the things we have, uh, these are the things involved in the material properties of the uh, finite element analysis. And finally, in analysis processes uh, using the solvers like a LS Dyna, radius, optics, and pattern. Uh, um, these are all the things used to analyze the problem which are you know, involved in finite element analysis. After finishing, after, after finishing these are all the things, we can import the file into NASTRAN that is to for solve the displacement and to compute the strain stress. These are the things involved in the pattern process. And finally, if there is any, if there is any error in the uh, NASTRAN process, we can, we, can, we, can, we can again go to pattern and solve the, uh, solve, solve the errors and then we can import to NASTRAN. And this is the process involved in NASTRAN and uh, pattern. And finally, this is the pre-processor. Uh, results can be showed in um, plots like deformation plots and uh, stress finite plots. And the finally, giving the report by using post-processor. And this is the analysis for aeroplane wings. This is the uh, this is the airfoil of the wings which is to be fixed to the uh, fuselage of the aircraft. This is the this is the engine area which it is to be fixed at the center of the wing. The load should be acting um, downwards of the spring, and the load is acting uh, acting over the top of the wing. Uh, it will deflection. It will deflect. Uh, this is the diagram shows how, how much of deflection it will it will occur when the load is acting over the top of the wing. And this is the wind energy on models. This is the uh, example for uh, uh, airplane wing analysis. So these are all the things involved in the finite element analysis. Uh, thank you.